Hey there, um, I'm going to share my workflow for JavaScript memory profiling and JavaScript execution profiling inside of Chrome. Now, if you're concerned you might have a memory leak, the first thing you want to do is head on over to the Chrome DevTools um, and Timeline and then find Memory Mode. Now, I have a page in front of me at the moment um, that basically has a button, and if I click it, it's going to incrementally increase the amount of memory this page is using. Um, it doesn't matter what specifically it's doing, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to first hit record on this page. So I'm going to hit record at the very bottom of the DevTools. And then I'm going to start interacting with this page. I'm going to click the button. Now what you'll start to notice is that the memory um, over in the summary view, so this area with the, uh, the blue that's, that's sort of increasing in steps, uh, this is the summary view. Um, and you want to keep an eye on that increasing. So uh, I've recorded for a few seconds. I'm just going to stop that, start to drill down. Um, and what you want to keep an eye out for is for a sawtooth curve. Now the sawtooth curve um, basically helps you see if there are lots of shortly lived objects um, inside your app. Um, and if there are a sequence of actions that isn't expected and you're noticing that you know, the DOM node count, for example, isn't going back down to your baseline, you might have a memory leak. Now the next thing that I want to do here is go and see, um, you know, is this tab, is this particular app actually you know, using a, a lot of memory? Um, and the way that I do this is I, uh, I use a tool in Chrome called the Task Manager. You can get to this using the Chrome menu and then Tools and Task Manager. So I'm just going to open this up. So this basically lists all the different processes that are currently inside the tools. Um, and if you right click on the header here, um, you can actually select um, a number of new options. And, and one of these is JavaScript memory. So if I enable that, I'm just going to quickly reconfigure these so you can read them a little better. I can actually go and drill down and see just how much memory this particular tab is using. As you can see, we're using a ton of memory on this tab. Um, it's just leaking all over the place. It's constantly increasing. And so I've confirmed that there was probably some sort of leak in this page, um, and I want to drill down further and figure out you know, what's causing this. Now, the way that I do this is I head on over to Profiles and uh, Record Heap Allocations. So in Record Heap Allocations, we have a tool called the Object Allocation Tracker. And you can use this to um, sort of optimize your workflow for, uh, for detecting if you have memory issues. Now, um, the Object Allocation Tracker uh, basically takes snapshots periodically, anywhere as frequently as every 50 milliseconds. And it's then going to take one final snapshot at the very end. Um, think of this as sort of a nice replacement for the way that you previously may have taken tons of different snapshots with the Heap Snapshot Profiler and then compared them. So I'm just going to click on Start now to begin recording. Um, now this, as I mentioned, combines the uh, snapshot information from the Heat Profiler with a nice incremental updating view that you get inside the timeline. Now, what you're seeing at the very top is some blue bars populating. Now the color of these different bars indicates whether or not these objects are still live in the Heat. So blue, as we're seeing, actually indicates that they're still live at the uh, end of the timeline, and gray indicates that they're allocated during the timeline, but they're being garbage collected. So we're not actually seeing a lot of gray, we're seeing tons and tons of blue. So I'm just going to stop my recording here and, and allow this to completely load up. As we can see, there's 514 megabytes um, of recording inside the snapshot. Now I can actually drill down here, I can select an area, I can take a, a view of the, uh, the sort of a complete uh, life cycle, li lifetime um, of this recording. I'm just going to dig down into one of these uh, regions and I can expand these different objects. Um, you'll see that some of these are color coded. I explain what these different colors mean um, in, uh, in, in my article, Taming the Unicorn, which talks a little bit more about the heat profiler. But you can then examine the retaining tree at the very bottom um, of this pane uh, to understand you know, why the object wasn't collected. And you can then make the necessary changes needed to remove these um, sort of references from your code. Now, another thing that can be important is to get a feel for um, how much uh, time your JavaScript is, is spending processing and executing. Um, we recently introduced the flame chart to help you with this. Um, and that can be found inside of the Collect JavaScript CP Profile option. Now I'm going to go to a slightly different demo for this. I'm um, just going to wait for this to quickly load up. Great, so I'm going to press uh, Start and then start interacting with my app. I'm just going to click on Create Tree. Now Flame Chart helps us understand JavaScript processing over time. and It's really useful for sort of spotting unexpected or particularly long um, function executions inside your app. Um, so once it's finished recording, we'll be able to sort of visually understand call progression and our retaining execution paths. Now uh, it's been recording for a few moments, so I'm just going to press on stop. 
And what we can see is that similar to the timeline memory um, view, we've got a, a summary pane at the top and a details view at the very bottom. Now the details view has got a call stack um, that's a little bit colorful. Let's, let's zoom in on this a little bit. We can see a bunch of different um, sort of colored blocks and the total height of these bars isn't really important. Um, the widths of them are pretty important though because that represents how much time different function execution is taking. So as I saw, as I just showed you, uh, you can zoom in, you can actually pan, you can move around the place quite easily. And uh, the horizontal axis, as I mentioned, um, represents time, vertical axis is the call stack. Now um, our, our call stack here is represented as blocks, right? And uh, a block that sits on top of another block was actually called by the loader function block. We can hover over any of these and just get a bunch of different information about, uh, about the function. So we can see the function name. In this case, it's create branch. We can see self time, total time, some other timing data. Um, now, if I were to actually click on one of these uh, function blocks, I can hop on over to the sources pane and actually take a look at the function that was responsible for it, which can be really useful if you want to be able to you know, live edit and debug. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what these different timing um, summary informations uh, that we see in the view represent. Now, self-time is the time that it took to um, complete the current invocation of the function. So in this case, create nodes and return last leaf. Uh, let's take a look at a slightly more expensive one, see if there's a good one here that we can, we can look at. So here we've got um, anonymous function, we've got create leaf. I uh, can't find one, but self-time basically represents how much time it took to complete the current invocation of the function, um, including only the statements in the function itself. But that doesn't include any of the functions that it called, just the statements. Um, total time represents the, uh, the time it took to complete the current invocation of the function as well as any of the functions that it called. And then you've got some aggregated time information. Now, um, aggregated self time is the time it took to um, complete all the invocations for the function across your sort of entire recording. But that doesn't include functions called by that function. And then aggregate total time basically includes everything. So aggregate total time um, for an invocated function including functions that were called by that function. Now I know that sounds a little bit you know, complicated, but uh, we're gonna be getting out some good docs about this stuff soon. But uh, yeah, you, know, you can still get some good mileage um, using the heap snapshots. It still shows you a nice memory distribution across your objects and, and DOM nodes, and it helps you discover you know, uh, what detached DOM nodes are still hanging around after GC, and you should be you know, spending time looking at those. But um, hopefully the flame charts, the object allocation tracker, uh, the timeline memory pane, and uh, the Chrome task manager um, can be a little bit useful for your memory profiling workflow. And uh, I hope this short video was useful. So, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask, and thank you.